Hello everyone, if you have not created an office project in Arcad before, this course has it all. We will create an office building that you see on your screen from start to finish, demonstrating a step-by-step -step process and exploring the best tools and features for efficiency and great results. This course is also for those who want to take their basic knowledge of Arcad to the next level. After completing this course, you will be equipped with all the skills needed to create a basic to a complex office structures in Arcad. This is a long video and it has been divided into parts. Make sure to check the video contents below. If you find this video useful, please like and share it with anyone you think will benefit. Subscribe and activate the notification bell to be notified for future videos. Without any further ado, let's get started. Okay, to get started, make sure you go down to the description and find the link for this uh, sketch. Download it so that you can follow along with this demonstration. The first thing we're going to run through the basic settings in order for us to be efficient of in assembling this project. The first settings that we need to do is to create enough room, enough working area, enough working space for our project because we're dealing with a multiple story building. I think we're going to create a roughly around 28 story build. So we need a vertical height for that. So I would start with the project info. Let's come here. There's this line you see on the info bar here. Let's get this line once you hover your cursor here you see this cursor changes to a move tool let's drag and dock it alongside the two pallets here this will give us enough room as you can see we have now the vertical height or the verticals i hope that makes sense and then the ben another benefit that it gives to dock our info box alongside the tools like this is to give you more parameters now to uh to be more parameters visible instantly once you activate each tool here unlike when it's at the top here and then uh, it, it gives you all i think majority of all the parameters that you get from the settings dialog so it will uh, yeah, eliminate enough or uh, more movements on going to the project set, i mean the default settings or dialog settings for each tool so i find it um very um useful okay Another thing is to set up is the the project or the elevation markers on the floor plane. If you watched my previous video, you know I always, when I carry out a project from start, I start with this elevation markers and change it because this is not our standard. It's a standard that we we get from the term, or from the software. So we don't want to be um, restricted by the software in order for us to create our own standard. So I would select this. Uh, selection and arcade, if you are new to arcade, selection arcade, it, it, it comes in different ways. For example, if you want to select all of this, you can specify the first point here and then draw a rectangle or a square to enclose all the elements that you want to, to select. And then you can specify the second point to select all of them like that in case you are new. Or you can just hover your cursor and then click it, uh, click just right direct to the element like that. Okay, let's select all of them and then open in settings. On the settings dialog, what you need to do is to move down here under marker and marker symbol and text, and then let's change the marker style to a circle four, and then move back to the marker section and set the marker size to 15 millimeters, and then hit OK to apply the changes. Okay, once we're done with this, we move on to the our project navigator this is where we browse our project we have all the viewpoints of our model or for our, our building so one uh, one thing that i need to change here is under the layout book so we have this default layout book that comes with a get template so let me just collapse uh, this so that you can see them in in holistically we have floor plans and elevations so we have um floor plans starting from zero to uh, uh the third story because by default i can give you three story level um setup so what i need to do here is let's open the ground floor and then you'd see now because of this sketch we're having on the floor plan or on the plan view is now expanded our window for the or the viewpoints for this um drawing so what i need to do is to centralize this i'll hit ctrl d to centralize my elevation markers to the sheet like that or to the layout and then i can get rid of this or eliminate this sketch by clicking on this edge and then use 
um, offset edge from the pet palette and then I can just bring it just to define it along the boundary of your, your sheet like that now you're pretty sure that everything that will be assembling on the plan view it will be updated here and it will be accurately positioned which is perfect in terms of the title block i'm not going to use the a default arcade title block if you are you know everyone has its own title block so what i created here we need to see first which master does does this layout um, linked to so i'll come here under the properties of this layout if you go down here these are properties of the layout it has um, the id the name of the layout and then the master master way or the master on which this is being linked which is uh, in this case is a2 landscape what you need to do here is to come under masters and then open that a2 landscape okay here's the title block that we are we are having or you're using i'm going to select all all of this and get rid of it i have something that i prepared for you to use which is uh this um which is this uh title block i'll select all of it and then right click to copy then let's go back to our file and then here right click and paste or control v it's been created from an a1 uh dimensions but we are now in an a2 dimensions what you need to do is to resize it but before we do that we need to complete our pasting uh, process as you can see we still have this marquee around our our element so if you escape without um, completing this it will disappear so we need to click outside it so that it can complete the, the, the operation or the process and then I'll select all of this um, by and then uh, you can hit ctrl k to bring a resize tool or you can go here under edit and then reshape let's find resize the shortcut is ctrl k as you can see here let's just click on that it will give you this resize window you just need to say okay and then i need to i'll pick this point i have to define the width that i want to resize or the, the dimension that i want to resize which is this basically and then bring it back to here okay it's something like this pretty impressive okay i need to place a project north here i can go here under object uh, under design tool palette so let's activate the object tool and then hit um, object settings let's find north we'll use this north symbol 26 i'll come here let's uh, find something interesting i think by default this is this is fine hit ok place it there I'm gonna position it uh, nicely somewhere here alongside this text yeah something like that now okay if i go back to my layout for floor plans let's just open the ground one here so we still have our source markers interfering with our title block so we need to move this back or here on this window what i'll do i'll just click on this hot spot this black hot spot and then uh, use uh, move sub elements let's just move it to here okay perfect we're good to go let's go back to our plan view to start our project okay let's get started now with the real stuff um i'm going to start by defining the footprint of our our project or the footprint of of our layout what i'll do i'll come here under design tool palettes and then let's activate the slab tool under slab tool we have um, we have parameters for that let's under structure i would just use a basic um, structure i don't want to conf uh, make this complicated for you and then material just leave it under structure concrete structural and then this thickness of this slab let's just leave it under 300 you can change if you want and then let's move down here under surfaces and then i want to override the top surface to be a tile i want to use a tile finish so scroll down here and think uh, go with this um, 300 by 300 millimeters tile and then i'll use the geometry method of a rectangle and then i'll come here under my 
ground flow within remember you have to draw within this um within the constraints of your elevation markers in order for you to be your drawings to be updated on the layout sheets that's how you are working effectively it's a smart way of doing your project so what i'll do i'll start by the first point here and then diagonally i can define my footprint but i have dimensions that we key in here on the tracker i will key in it's going to be thirty thousand, which is 30 meters by 30 meters i'm using millimeters so then hit okay there we go that's basically the entire footprint of our building so if we check this on 3d let's check this on 3d all right i will hit arrow tool to cancel the to cancel the operation and then hit O to activate your orbit tool this is basically what we have and then uh, we just have uh, let's go back here under stories we just have one two zero to two stories and like i said we are creating multiple story in terms of the heights it's going to be around 28 stories let's set that so i'm gonna come here and uh, right click on this and then say story settings or you can just hit Control 7 is a shortcut for the story settings. Okay, by default, I can, like I said, to give you three stories as you can see from 0 to 2. All right, and then by default, it will give you also the height as a 3 meters height. I think this is a standard, I can also use it, um, but it depends on, on on the region you are. So some of the standards differ from region or country to country, so you better be uh sitting with what you are you are using that side so in order for me to create a new story uh, it will depend on where i want to create in uh, for example i want to create a foundation for this project i would say insert above the insert a story above the ground floor which is going to be our sorry what did we did no insert below sorry insert below because it's a foundation i would name it foundation and this will, the height of the depth of the foundation is going to be around two meters or 2.5 okay and then the remaining is going to be the stories above i'll select story number three and then i'll say insert insert just just like this i can, can get um number of stories up to let's just make it 30 because we are oh no let's make it 28 29 to allow it the building is going to be 28 stories but i'll have this just for the sake of creating an uh, allowance of uh what you call the roof and all the likes okay you can go as much as you can in terms of the number of stories in aggregate i think i've tested it it can go beyond 500 floors i don't think there's a building that is around five, that can reach that the tallest building in the world is roughly around 150 which is the Baj Khalif. i'm not sure if there is any out there that is more than that let me know in the comment section if you you have a building or you know a building that is more than um, 150 stories okay so once you're done with your story settings you can hit okay but make sure the heights are okay and the important thing that to get from here the important thing to derive from this is the the height of your building of which I said is going to be on 28 stories which is around uh, 84 meters high which is 8,000 I mean 84,000 millimeters I'm using millimeters in my region so it's going to be roughly around 84,000 meters that's the height I can copy this height because I'm going to use it um, let's keep it in the copy uh, in the uh, copy clip on the clipboard sorry so that it's going to be useful going forward um, you'll see in the minute what I'm talking about I'll hit OK and then it will update my my story uh, views here as you can see okay that's pretty impressive i'm good to go now now we have a floor we have a floor um slab that is linked to a um, home story if i guess the ground story yes the ground floor is the home story for this but we need to take this to all these stories there are a lot of ways of doing it um, you could come here under ground floor and then uh, you can control c to copy this and then you move to the next story control v to paste click outside con uh, move to the next one control v to paste just like that but this you can imagine how long this 
could take you to complete as you can see we have 28 stories so i would uh, recommend you use the multiplication method so let me just uh, delete uh, get rid of this i would recommend you use multiplication method multiplication method works in two ways it works on 2d so if i uh, 2d and 3d so if i to select this element and then click in one of the hotspots here on the pet palette it will give me this multiply um tool and you could see it's in a 3d mode you could do it you could do it again on on 2d let's go back here on uh, ground floor so that you can see so here on 2d if we click one of this point you'd see it will give you this even the icon is different from the 3d one this represent the x the x y coordinates and then from the 3d is the uh, z coordinates right so here we multiply along the z coordinate vertically so we're gonna click on these points and then uh, let's activate that this is the window of multiplication um, command it have four different types of multiplication you can use this one here 2d which is for dragging alongside the x y we have the rotation and elevation is the one that will give you the the, the height or the the, 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 the the z coordinates and then we, we have this intricate uh, matrix uh, um, command this will give you an, an a patterns that you would uh, uh, complex patterns uh, um, i say so if you want to run around or create some expressions um, to create a nice arrangement you can use this one so i'll have to do a video separately because i know it's, it's, it's there are a lot of good stuff that you can get from this uh, command so in this case we're going to use the elevate because we're dealing with the uh, multiplying to duplicate this along the the z coordinates so still under the graphical input method now we have also four different types of um, multiplying this we have increment and spread increment spread and distribution so let me start with the dis distribution distribution means i'm going to distribute this uh, i'm going to distribute number of copies in this case we have uh, how many because we're dealing with a 28 story floor uh, or story of uh, building we now have one floor that is currently on the window so that means we're gonna do 27 that's number of copies and then we're gonna distribute along the height of the building remember so you can, you can see here the first point is this one and then you specify the second point which is the height of the building so you can even hover your cursor here to say define distribution of fixed copies between two points these two points will define our height of a building remember we copied that from our story settings so I would hit OK and then do that so let's pick here and then if you say move it vertically like that you need to define the height of your building i said it was what around what eighty-four thousand. and then hit enter that will run all the copies to the all the floors okay just like that okay now if you select one of these one of these uh one of these elements of floors you would see they are they are all linked to the ground floor their home store is the ground floor of which is wrong it's wrongly done reason being reason reason why this is like this is because let's just undo and then uh, if you go back to our multiplying command right and then you see we have a vertical displacement we're saying we want to displace these copies vertically but we have also this asset home story by elevation so it will if we activate this and then we hit ok now if you come here and then 84,000 which is the height of our building if you select one of these you'll see now it's been linked to the relevant story view so this will be a 14 story and then if i select this you'll see it's around 23 story of it's a great thing to have you cannot do it manually um, and set this manually that is not the point of aggregate point of aggregate is to understand how it functions and then maximize on its strength and use it to um, use aggregate ag not against you but alongside your your work so that's one of the things that are very important in, in, in aggregate okay so we basically have now the geometry of our building 
we have all these flows now in place what i need to do here is to create an envelope to create an envelope we would use a pattern wall tool it's one of the powerful uh, tool in hackhead that is I, I think it's it's under it's underutilized if i had to put it that way so if you activate the pattern tool under the design tool palettes let's open um its settings open its settings dialog and then what you need to do here is uh we have uh, a, a scatum uh sorry kitten all um styles or favorites that we created before but by default let's just i go through the process of setting uh kitten all from scratch i want you to understand how it works um, just have the basics you just need the basics and like you are good to go okay so by default it will give you this uh, favorite which is this and then if you come here under scheme settings we also have favorites there for the schemes this is by default architect i have different types of styles of favorites that i've created for kettles check the link on the description to uh, download that and load that to your project so what i need to do here is to set a kettle scheme for my building or my for my for for the envelope of this project I would use this checkerbox, uh, checkerbox, checkerboard uh, style. Let's double click on it or apply so that you can have it here. And uh, the one thing that I need to do here is uh, to set all the panels. Let's set all the panels. You can select all of them by using shift and hold and add each to the selection like that. Let's set them to be a, a main panel, right? Once we're done with that, we need to set the width of this to be 1.2 meters, 1,200 uh, millimeters. And then the height is going to be, I'm going to remove, uh, I'm going to leave, leave just one panel. Okay, let's just leave one panel. I can just say remove and then set this to be 3 meters. 3 meters is the height of our, of our floor okay so once you are done here we can come here under frames but before we set up all these um, necessary things let's just hit okay to apply so that you can see um, the changes happening instantly i'll hit okay and then let's go to the we can use we can apply it on 3d if you want to by uh, pressing and holding the uh, space bar key in your keyboard and then if you hover on, on your what you call we're activating the magic one too and then if you hover around your slabs it will give you this this graphic you can click in one of the slabs like that it will place our it will place our curtain wall around like that that's good right so from here as you can see we can we can do much we can do better than what we see here because I don't want to see the corners here. I just want to see a glass, a, just a joint, a part joint of glass. So to give me that effect of infinity of the glass. So I really need to set that. And then I don't know why this is not covering the entire height. Right? See, let's select it and then make it uh, three meters here. It's supposed to be three meters. I don't know why. It's not covering but it's fine this we can get it by if you if you were to duplicate this vertically like this let's control shift d and copy it and place it there i think it's sitting pretty nicely along the the thing so it's fine let's just delete that for now and then uh, let's select it and go back to our settings let's go back to our settings and what we need to do here because we have a slab we need to define the uh, we need to define how do we treat our slab we don't want to be exposed uh, the edges of slab like this we want to um, have a trimmer of our kettle that we enclose our slab how do we achieve that i'm going to say uh, here let's add another another uh, line for that by hitting insert panel row here and then this panel is going to be height of our our slab which is 300 so i'm going to say 300 which is that and then i'll select both the panels and then make them um distinct 
So if you make them dizzy, then hit OK. It didn't apply. Let's go back. There's something wrong we did. If it didn't apply, that means uh, if we say, okay, let's make this. Oh no, I see why. Let's go back to the settings. I see why. Because we added 300. So now it becomes 3.3. .3. That's beyond the height of our, our, of our flows. So we need to reduce this one to 2.7. Okay. And then hit OK. It should apply. As you can see, it applied to, to that. But now it's not covering the... It's not covering where we want to treat, as you can see. We want to make this hide the edge of our slab. So the best thing is to raise our curtain wall to by 300. Start it right on top of our slab. Okay, if you see 300, and then make sure it's, it's 300 as well. I mean, it's 3000 as well. Perfect. Now we have this. All right, so we're pretty sure now the edges of our slab will be hidden, or this will be the kind of treatment it will, it will get. Okay. So I need to play around with the settings of this um, transom and moulin uh, um, elements for this curtain or components. Sorry. And then now let's go back to the uh, settings and then under frames, that's where we can set that. Let's make the, the transom. It will give you what a transom in the preview here. Okay. And then uh, let's, if you come here under transom frame type, we can choose what we want. In this case, I'm going to use a built-in frame. Okay. And then uh, if I hit OK to apply the changes, you will see now we have something like that. We can decide what you want. Do you want to have, do you want to have our, our glass outside and then the frames are going to be inside. We can go back to that one. Let's just say, uh, maybe instead of this, let's make it but, and then uh, we leave it at uh, this height. And then I'll say the boundary. Let's say the boundary is going to be, make sure the boundary is, is the same as, is the same dimensions as, as the transom. The transom is around 80 by 200. Let's say the boundaries it's also 80, 80 by 200, which is fine. Okay, let's hit OK. Just to appreciate the setting. Something like this. Let's reduce the thickness of it. I'm going to make it uh, for the transom. Let's make this 80 by 80. This is going to be 80. Oh, sorry. 80. Yeah. Something like that. Okay. And then uh, one thing we need to do is to eliminate, like I said, this edges. Let's see how we can do that. Let's go back under scheme. We can say, uh, let's get rid of this. And then see what will happen. No, it didn't happen. Let's undo and go back. I think yeah, the best way is to come here and then let's say edit. We're going to access the edit, um, the edit mode of this, and then we're going to select all these and delete just to clean up these edges. I want to have, like I said just a corner of exposed glass get it off here move to the next corner let's do the same move to the last corner and select delete right it looks impressive i can increase the width of all my panels to 1.5 but for now Let's just leave it the way it is. I think it's perfect. I think it's perfect. Okay. What do you think about the materials?
what do you think about the materials i think it's also something that is subject to change let's just leave it for now and then from here once you are happy with your curtain mall settings you can now run multiple copies like we did for the slab okay let's click on this and then multiply we're going to use the same uh, previously um, settings or uh, previous settings i'll hit ok then click on in one of this point vertically move that and then key in the height of the building which is 8 or 8 that will run across like that Because we're dealing with the curtain wall, this will take a bit of a time to process. Don't worry, it's not your building or your fault or your computer. Sorry. So that's basically what you have here. Let me zoom in and see. I think this is pretty much what I wanted. It looks impressive for now. It looks great. It looks great. What I'll do? Let's Control L because I know. I want to control my element, uh, my elements, and manage them very well, guys. You need to have a, a good system of, a good system of control, controlling and managing your, your elements within your, your your project file. So layers are very very uh, important in that regard. So I'll create a layer called, um, let's say, called outer. Okay, let me just say uh, envelope. Oh, sorry, what am I doing here? To create a layer, I need to come here and say, okay, let me just take advantage of this and then hit Ctrl C to copy it and then say new and then paste that. Hit OK. Now we've created an envelope layer. What happened to the other layers? You. That, may, that might be a problem, guys. Instead of saying okay, I would cancel because I don't know what happened to the layers here. I might uh, delete them by mistake. So I'll just hit cancel and then come back again under layer settings window by hitting control L. Or you can come here under window, uh, so the options, element attributes, layer settings. The shortcut is control L, like I said. Okay, and then I hit new here to create a new layer, call it uh, envelope, and then hit okay. I'll create another one called um, shading shading for this project and then hit OK hit OK to apply that so let's take all our curtain walls I'll, I'll pick one of the parameters or you can just come here under the design tool panel and activate the tool then and then hit Control A to select all of them so let's assign it a layer for envelope envelope there we go and then uh, once you are done with that let's just wait for it to process that once you are done with this we have to move to the next um, to the next stage when we'll be doing the layout Okay, let us create the layout for this project. Um, obviously, this floor has to have a layout. In most cases, for the offices project, this is um, typical. And uh, I find it very easy or simple, for lack of better weight, to create office projects or office towers in Aggregate. It's one of the simplest projects uh, type to create in Aggregate. You don't necessarily need um, two or complicated tools or advanced tools to create a great great um, office project in Archicad so I'm assuring you that and with this course it will give you all the necessary tools and information skills that will put you ahead of your game you would understand what is meant for Archicad as a, as a beam software so what I'll do here I'll come here under ground floor this is where we're gonna start our layout we're gonna start our sketch of layout so in this case um, let me just assume everything is typical guys I, I know for office towers like this one you'd find they are maybe uh, from zero or from the ground level to maybe the third floor fourth floor they are addressing this different uh, the different uh, use 
you get what i'm saying or it can be a miss it can be a mixed use kind of a, a tower you would have uh you'd have offices at the top restaurants and then maybe um, some shopping stuff like that but let's assume for this demonstration it's just an office block and and all the floor all the floors are typical are just the same so that's what i wanted us to be uh, in the same page so what i need to do here firstly i would say um to start with uh this uh slab let's select it and then pick one of the points and then i'll offset all edges but in this case i don't want to i want to remain with the original so i would add a copy by hitting alt or sorry control in your keyboard you'd see this plus uh Kesa. that means you are carrying a copy so i would want to create the width of my my offices is going to be around 10 meters which is 10 10,000 millimeters okay you can confirm that there's 10 and then uh, here is around 10 meters as well so this area is to be the circulation area this will be also for the uh, staircases and your elevators just like that stuff like that and then i want to have a kind of uh, a shape that will define that so instead of having this as it is here i'll select this um, corner and then let's uh, fillet it so i'll fillet it around maybe let's say eight meters and hit okay that's basically what i wanted and then what i need to do here is to add the staircases and add uh, the elevator so let's go here to the object tool open in settings and then just type or search for the elevator there we go we have elevator for 26 because i'm using version 26 you can go ahead and do some settings um, the styles and type of elevator you want for this demonstration let's just uh, leave it as it is and then i'll hit ok uh, click here to place it um, let's um, escape to cancel that command and then select your element Control e to rotate it i want to rotate it um, on the horizontal manner and then i can come here and uh place it there okay or you can just place it in the center somewhere here something like that all right so i need to have an internal wall here so i'm gonna go here in the design tool palette let's activate the wall tool i would just use a basic structure again i don't want to complicate things material make sure it's the brick structural and then uh, let's come here under dimensions 300 is fine what i need to do is to set up the surfaces make them or override all the surfaces and then change it to stucco white let's find stucco white and then link all the, the surfaces to be equal or be the same and then i can come here and place this i want to place it to the outside of i want to place it to the outside of the much more of the slab inside of the slab so so i need to do it to change the reference location of this wall let's come here and then make it in the inside now we have it on the inside like that and then i can click by um, pressing and hold the space bar to uh to activate the magic wand space bar key hold and then click on the on the slab like that okay we don't need this slab i can select it and then get rid of it so now we have this kind of uh, geometry in the center of our building so i think i need to have this two of this uh, select and control shift d to copy to get a copy to the other side and then we can select all of them let's just move them relatively to this side all right we're gonna have the staircase this side as well but before we continue with this with the circulation and uh, um, area let's partition our our building so i'll pick parameters of this slab i mean of this wall and then i would use the midpoint of this wall to place a wall so in order for you to find a midpoint you see here i don't see a midpoint of this wall i have to come here under guides guidelines and then click on this arrow under guidelines move here around snap points and then make sure this snap points is active so that when you work your cancer above your elements like this it will give you the it doesn't even 
temperature to give you this um, line to indicate it's a midpoint of your your element so i'll select that and then instead of using this i need to center my wall on the midpoint so i would use a reference location to be on the center so that you can be like that and make sure your wall go right on the edge of your slab and then right click to hit ok you don't want your, your walls to extend beyond the curtain wall um, um, element because it's going to be it's going to disturb the elevations and then practically that is not how it's been constructed practically this is how it's going to be constructed and then we're going to have the ceiling guys or whatever to treat the edges of your your slab like this okay and then i will have the same um situation on this side i'll select this midpoint then uh place it like that right click and then hit ok if you are using this geometry method but uh polyline i can change it to two point method where i just specify two point and then complete my my placement okay so i think one thing we should do again we can maybe extend this wall oh sorry let's unsuspend our group so that you can select this wall separately i want to extend this wall to this to this direction i'm not gonna dwell much on the design of it but i just want to come up with the layout so that you can see how how it functions how how to approach this kind of um operation in architect when i'm dealing with office structures okay so what else can i do i think this can be an open area this wall again can also go all the way to here what do you think about this design guys let me know in the comment section <laughs> what do you think so yeah it's fine now and um what i wanted to create here is uh, an atrium as well so i'm going to let me just go ahead and place a staircase and then i can uh, do that let's say activate the staircase where is the staircase to here is the staircase tool. I'm going to set the width of the staircase to be 1.5 because it's a commercial, it's a commercial uh, building. And then I'll come here. I won't dwell much on the settings of the staircase, but you can come here and open a settings dialog. You can set uh, the different type of you know, whatever staircase you would want. It will depend on on that. You can come here and, 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 and set that but for this i'll just use just the basic um stickies okay what i need to do is to draw it uh, from here i'm gonna draw it from here and then go to this direction i want it to be no it's fine so i'm gonna count number of uh number of steps on this flight i think around 10 is fine and then i'll click and then i'll change the flight into a landing because you want to land from here and then the width of of this landing or the distance between the flights i will make it 300 okay and then once you're done with the flight we need to i mean with the landing we need to introduce the second flight so i'll come here and say flight we go all the way to 20 pretty simple stuff okay then i can come here and arrow tool and select this Control d and move it from this corner and place it to that corner all right it looks great but normally the staircases are enclosed in in this type of buildings it depends anyway for this type of design i would uh let me pick parameters of this wall and then uh, i will uh, enclose the staircase like that let's move this from here i don't think it's this is straight it's not straight i would get rid of it and then redraw it again perfect i'll select it move it back by 1.5 enter and add a selection of this by shift hold and then use intersect to intersect the two walls i'm going to now uh, create some openings to this um, to this uh, building normally this is how you create office uh, uh, project because 
the tenants will come and partition the entire spaces so what you need to do is to create some spaces where tenants will come in and customize it according to their their needs so i'll just provide these spaces i have one two three four spaces to to work around all right but uh i need to create an atrium for this so what i need uh, i need an atrium i can use this it can be a nice atrium so what i'll do i'll select that and then pick one of these points and then use um, radial stretch let's stretch this outside out by 1.5 which is the width of also oh, that let's undo with the width of uh, the corridor or i can just use a, a polyline let's come here under the documents i can collapse this design tool palette activate the polyline under documents and draw a line like this let's draw a line like that and then end it here i can select this part make sure this part is an arc i'll convert it to an arc like that okay and then i can pick one of the points and offset all edges to create a width of our corridor then this will be around 1.5 okay so what i'll do i'll pick the parameters of this wall to activate the wall uh, the wall tool and then i will and activate the magic wand by pressing and holding the magic wand tool, which is the space bar key and then click on that line so this i can get rid of it or it can be let me just let's get rid of it oh sorry about that and let's unsuspend groups i can use it as a railing um but i need to use a separate or in a railing tool to place that i'll get rid of this and then the line that we created remember before let's find it or we can just come here and activate the polyline and then hit ctrl a to select it let's click one of the points and then offset it by 1.5 all right 1.5 so that will be the corridor and then here will be adjusted a atrium it's a void a long void across all the floors except the rooftop and the rooftop we're gonna have a skylight to generate light within the building okay so um this i'm just gonna use a railing tool to place it let's just uh come here under design tool palette and activate the railing tool i'm not going to bother much with the design of the railing as well because um i don't want this video to be uh long i'll hit okay I'm gonna use this 34 settings of that. Let's activate the marquee. I mean the magic one by pressing holding the space bar key and then click on this line to place our our railing. Okay. But uh, we need to create this. I think let me undo uh, this. We have to have uh, let me just quickly do this because we need to have this people people need to have an access to to that so we can just see this and then do the same to this direction and then that okay so the remaining part it becomes a void so let me just use a line and then change the uh, line type to a dashed so that I can represent this as a void I don't know something like that okay so I can now activate the railing tool and magic wand to place it here oh wow I didn't want it to go all the way so I'll get rid of this part just like that all right okay and then uh, maybe instead of having it sharp like this we can chamfer these edges i don't know we can do it on uh, on a railing so let's click one of this point yes we can we can fillet and chamfer this by roughly let's say two meters ah no it doesn't work so we have to get rid of it and then do it on a line let's chamfer by two meters enter 
do the same to the other side and so we have basically something like that i think it's very interesting like this i can trim off the edges of these lines so go back to the railing tool and then hit um space bar and hold and then click on the line i don't know why it keeps on continuing all the way so let me just get rid of this point to there all right so we have basically something like this i can uh, align my how can it be yeah somewhere there that's basically my point i know it doesn't look uh great guys uh just for the sake of this uh, demonstration i just wanted you to trim that so now is the time for us to do the openings so i'll place some doors to access doors to give access to all the spaces so i think here we're going to have a corridor a lobby because we need to access this area so i need a lobby maybe i can say, get this wall move it at the top by by 1.5 to create a lobby and then i can fillet it with this wall to intersect it that way and then i can get rid of this uh, edge by hold click and hold control to activate the scissor tool and then click oh sorry this can happen again guys um i don't know why it's strange but i need to select this wall as a trimmer and then i can now activate my scissor tool to cut it off okay and this can be off as well like that right so i'll go to the door tools let's find the door activate the door tool and then open in settings i want to find a double door under hinge doors let's go down here and look for a double door that will have a transom which is this one let's set some settings let's run through some settings the first setting that i need to do is the model attributes which is uh this part and then i'm going to activate the uniform door services to be i just want the service to be uniform and then set uh, it to be a metal metal aluminium and then i'll set the 3d detail level to be full resolution and then i'll hit ok no before i hit ok let's go back to the list of parameters again to find flow pen and section under flow pen section we're gonna set the 2d detail level to be 1 is to 50 and then the reveal on symbols to be always uh showy just like that and then let's get rid of to use the fields to our doors and uh set uh the pens to color two on your on your color table and then hit okay i'm going to start with this area let's apply a door here you could see we have a problem the door width is bigger than our path, our corridor so i'll just move this by 500 select that select these tools to chamfer and then pick parameters of the door we can also apply it here and then apply it uh, apply it where again i think we can have a lobby again here that will save us these two spaces so i select this wall move it out by maybe two meters and then activate the scissor tool by control and hold and then click on this um uh, take this wall move it back by no let's just move it back by, by two meters something like this so that like, we can have uh pick parameters of this so that you can have a door here on the side and then another door on the side the lobby looks small but uh, it can be changed okay it can be changed and then i would um, activate the scissor tool and then trim off these edges and then i'm going to use uh, pick parameters of this wall use the center point of this wall to draw a wall make sure its um, reference location is on the center so that it can be centrally positioned to this wall and then draw it this side okay so that's basically that in terms of the spaces all the spaces now have access we created we have uh, managed to complete our our staircases and our elevators and we have a circulation area with the atrium void i don't know why this is uh, showing that okay it uh, rem remains from 
these are means from the tree of that we have we have to have an access to our staircase we're gonna also have a double door there let's just uh pick parameters of that and then place it there okay that looks fantastic all right once you're done with this uh i i, I don't want to go through the settings of further uh, so here maybe can be spaces for restaurants and shopping uh, stuff and then this side will be offices obviously you need people from this office need to eat as well okay so you have this type of spaces who would service such kind of uh, amenity so i think once you're done with your layout i'm pretty happy with this result because for the sake of this demonstration we don't have to do much in detail um all the it's just to get the basic and fundamentals in place and then we are good to go so what we need to do here in the next step is to multiply this into um all the all the the flows right so if we check on 3d let's zoom in here and see now we have our project okay we have our ground placed with uh with elements you could see so for the ground for the ground it can be a little bit different um unlike other flows but like i said for the sake of this demonstration let's just leave it the way it is okay let's just leave it the way it is and uh let's now take this to the other flows there are different ways of doing it and i would show you both ways and then recommend you the the best method to approach uh, this guys so the first method let me just hide the layer for the curtain roll. i'll select the curtain roll and then right click go to layers hide the layer once we've hidden the layers what you need to do uh, is to is to take all this to up i'm not impressed with the size of the the doors let's before we move on let's select all the doors in control a to select all the doors make sure they see the offset the base offset is 300 i don't know why it's not sitting on top of the slab So this level is sort of yeah, how much? Is it on zero? Oh I see. Oh I see. Um the reference line of the slab is at the bottom. Okay. So we could say let it be at the at the top. Like that. I know this will affect our curtain wall, but we, we can adjust that. It's fine, we can adjust that anyway. It's fine, and then I'll hit, I would activate the magic one tool or to pick parameters. To pick parameters, guys, I keep saying pick parameters maybe because everyone we have different levels is to use this tool to pick parameters or alt C. So every time you use alt C to pick parameters, of just to activate the tool here and then hit control A. What I need to do is uh, come here under settings. And then I want to change the height of the transom. Let me just zoom in. Let me cancel and zoom in so that you can see. Go back to the settings. And then the transom is going to be under parameters of shape. Yes. And then I'm going to make this transom to be 600. Okay. Once it's 600, let's come here under preview and then activate the front. Once it's 600, it will include the height remember of the entire height of the building of the of the what you call of the door so i'll hit ok and then you see it it eats on the height of the door so if you have to hit m to measure hit m on to measure on the keyboard and then measure this distance. you see now our height of door is 1.8 we don't want that we want to uh, maintain two meters of door height so how can you go about that we're gonna say uh, this 600 is going to be added on top of the it's going, supposed to be 2.6 no 2. Uh, yeah so 2.6 and then this remains around 600 okay let's go back if you come here but and then hit m 
if you measure from here to there is now two meters perfect and then uh, i'm not happy with the with this it's called casing outside so i'll go back and then under the parameter list let's find the out case outside which is this and then get rid of that and then move to the inside make sure it's also removed perfect and then i can uh, change also the pens i don't like that pens so i can start maybe check from the model attributes right yeah and then set this to be color two set all three this to be pen two right and then hit ok ah, i'm pretty impressed now with the result so to multiply this across all the floors we need to group all the elements let's select all the walls and with the elevators and staircases together with uh, all this let's group and then control g to group once you've grouped that we go back to our 3d window and select that make sure the suspend group is active and then you can do the same process we did to multiply uh, we have 27 floors and the height of our building is 8 point it's 8,000, sorry, 84,000 meters or millimeters. Then hit enter to multiply that across all the floor, all the floors. This will take a little bit of time, not less than seconds to compute that process because that's a lot for a lot of floors. There we go. There we go been placed for all the floors as you can see it looks great and then uh, we need to have uh, yeah that's that's another method to do that this will take you to increase the size of a file so it will increase the number of polygons within your file and then hit your project once you move to the next stages you start crying or crashing it will slow down your, your, your performance so the best method to is to reference this layer because it's typical is to reference it from the external source or from the external file we're going to use what you call modules in ArchiCAD to achieve that so let me just say undo let me undo the process yeah it's gonna take this Let's undo the process and then go back to the ground floor. On the ground floor, we need to save this as a module. To do that, let's um, go here and then say file, um, libraries and objects. And uh, you move down here, save selection as a module. What am I doing? Yeah. Do you have a module here? Selection as module. Mm, I think it's under external content. Sorry. Sorry, Jens. And then save selection as module okay and then i'm gonna give this uh, a folder let's find a folder here under youtube videos yes and then let's name this typical typical flow layout okay i already created a module before for that let's just replace this save replace the selection with this holding module yes save and then hit yes once you've saved this it will be now an external file let's see or oh, it didn't convert this as an external file i can go ahead and delete this but before i delete make sure you move it aside let's just move it aside okay oh sorry the left and the line i can select or activate the polyline tool and then hit also control a to add that selection and then move it yeah yeah you know this is also selected i can deselect that move it to the side like that. i don't want to delete it yet because uh, i just want to be sure just want to be certain with the, your module is it working so to bring that module now into our project so we're going to use what you call a hot link manager 
So let's go to file and then still under external content. We're going to say place place a hot link, right? And then you're gonna come here and select the module. So let's add it. Uh, let's select the module from file from the folder we created. And uh, we need to come here under the file type and change this to Archicad module or module file, right? This is the module. By default, it will give you this a movie kind of um, an icon. Let's select it and then bring it to that. We are saying all stories enter. It says select which story of the source project should be placed. I would say, uh, let's say all stories because we're going to apply to all stories anyway. And then hit OK and then select that. Then once you're done here, you can say place. By default, it will create or again as a separate layer for, for the modules as you can see. So it will uh, load that for you and then place the hot link. There we go. It says select which story of the hot link being placed should correspond to the current story of the host project, which is basically the ground. Ground, everything is fine. And then I'll hit OK. So this will be placed and then you need to complete the operation by clicking outside this marquee. That will load all this into our flows. So if we check on 3D, what happened? It's just loaded one. Okay, just loaded one. No, it's fine. Let's do it again. I think I made a mistake somewhere. I would uh, go back to file. Let me just get rid of this first. Let's delete this first. Let's go to file, external content, place module. Um, I'm gonna change or just just that one. Place. Let's go here. Select all the stories. Select the ground and then hit OK. Click outside. And then let's see on 3D. Okay, um I made a mistake guys. Um the module has to in-house also the, the slab. Okay, but okay, let, let me just I'll demonstrate, I'll explain that, or you'll see when I'm, I'm, I'm moving to the next uh, session why I'm saying that. So let's click one of this point of our module, and then we're going to still use multiply. Let's multiply this to all the flows, right? And then I'll say the height is 84,000 millimeters. And then hit enter to multiply our modules to all the flows. So this will give us enough room. This will give us enough room because uh, once we have some changes in one of our layout, we just we're gonna create or do that in our module, our module file, and then automatically we can come here and update the entire instances because now this will act, this now are instances of the module, instances of a typical flow module. Okay. So once we have this, we need to create, like I said, a void across all this uh, slab, all these flows. We have an atrium here, remember? Okay, so what you need to do, let's go back to the ground. And then uh, I would use, you could go one by one on your slab to create an opening here. Something like that. Or we could use uh, that line to manipulate it. We can use this erase it line. Let me find it. Okay, let's go here under polyline under documents and then control A. Oh control A because it's been grouped. It will give us that. Yes. Then control C. Basically what I want to create here is uh I want to use an Okay, let me explain this way. I'll pick one of this and then use subtract polygon, right? I need to subtract the opening for for the eight in each in each floor. So you can imagine 
the time will consume to achieve that. We can we would, we would sleep here trying to uh, achieve that. There are 28 stories, remember, to, to cater for that. So we could use now a tool called uh, an opening under design tool palette. So let's find a tool called opening, right? With this tool, let me see, yeah, opening. If I hover above the slab like this, it will select it, it will highlight it as you can see, and then I can now place a hole, a hole to the to the slab, and then I can define the hole by using these points or polylines, sorry, of, of hot hot spots, just like that. But uh, you can also see this can really be also a problem right but let's just i'm just showing all the methods so that you can you can see the pros and cons of each method right so this will be there so here it will be an arc oh, yeah. be straight and then this will be an arc same applies to this here i think i can come here and fix this also something like that yeah pretty much accurate right i think here also needs to be straight all right, so if we check on 3D and uh, we won't get that window or view we want to see here, but the best way is to create a 3D cut. Let's use a marquee tool to achieve that. And then it has to be a, a heavy marquee to select across all the floors. And then I can now come here and draw a line like that. A box like this and then right click to show my queue in 3d this will give us the 3d window for only the my queue let's just wait and then orbit and see so we have the card from this floor as you can see right and then what we need to do we still have problem this problem guys to fix but it's not a big problem it's just a, a simple stuff to carry so what I need to do is to select this opening okay. and then I want to transfer this opening to all these slabs for, for the remaining floors. To do that is to select this uh, hotspot. I don't know you can call it a menu or a what, but it looks like a menu. Click on this menu and then it will give you this. Um, currently we have only one cut, which is the SLA001, the ground slab. We want to add others on the on the selection so let's click on this plus and then i'm going to select that and then also go back and click plus and then add to that just like this this is effective but uh are they better tools yes there are better way of doing it what are better ways okay the best way is to let's just undo i'll say undo Let's undo, undo, undo. Let's just find that. The best way is to include this into our 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 module. So what I'll do, I'll select the slab with the opening and then control C. Right? Control C. What we need to do is uh, is to select our our slab, our 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 module. To differentiate the module and a normal element and I can you see the hotspot changes to be a what you call this a square so if I had to select a normal element you see it's on circle the hotspots are on circle and again you cannot edit the module here even if I select this wall and then say go to its settings I won't apply the changes to this and I cannot do anything other than just moving it and copying it to multiply it you get what i'm saying to edit it no you have to edit it on a separate file and you host on uh, a separate google file so i can right click on it and then say um uh hot link module and then 
edit the module in a separate archicad let's do that it has to open the archicad uh, window if it doesn't open let's open this and then go to file open let's find our module this is the module hit open and then we're going to add the changes only to the module and we're going to apply it apply these changes to our instances onto the host file which is our project so i see that as the best way of doing it so let's um we have a slab here no we don't have a slab i'll control v and paste that slab there and i would use the original location because they share the same original or the same position according to the xyz coordinates let's paste it here you see now it's sitting right on the position of our our layout and then click outside wow we don't have uh we didn't copy even the what you call the opening so let me get rid of it go back to the host file and then i want to select the slab and and the open right Control c to copy go back to the module file Control v to paste there we go once we are done with these changes we can say uh, uh, file save this and then change this to a module change the file type to a module and uh, let's locate that folder let's locate that folder where we saved it under videos office building there we go we replace it save yes we want to replace it and then we go back to our host file once we get in our host file and then go to file uh, external content then let's open the hot link module manager you'd see now this is the placed um, typical flow layout module so it indicates under the status says it's been modified there are some updates we need to make so if you select it you can say let's select it and then you can say update because we, we have made some modification onto the module and then you can hit ok that is going to be applied now to all the instances within our, our our project file i see that as a fantastic approach because you just do once and then it apply automatically to all the the flows by the way uh we have the slabs that are here we need to get rid of them right if you come here on 3d we already have slabs that are not part of our uh, the instances which is our modules so we need to get rid of all the slabs that we can remain with only the slabs for the modules okay so to do that i'm going to activate the slab tool and then hit ctrl a then delete there we go so you deleted only the slabs and then remain with the slabs for for the modules as you can see so now we have this applied across all our flows we now have this atrium this big atrium to our, our building looks nice you can play around with this if you want and de differentiate the curve just to, to differentiate the curve to come up with a nice atrium if i had to sit down and have enough time and someone is paying me to to design this project i can spend a lot of time and create a nice rhythm for this atrium you, you know what i mean okay and then uh, if you for example other changes are going to be like i want to change the or to treat the underside of the slab but let's just leave it the way it is for now for the sake of this let's just leave it the way it is okay here's your staircases we also need to create a void for the staircases so i'm going to go back to our our module and then pick parameters of this or i can just come here and activate another opening tool we would have uh where is it open tool let's create an open here and then select this run it stretch it to 
affect the staircase up to this area because here it will be circulation for the staircase and then instead of having it solid like this let's select them both of these and then i'm going to get rid of uh, the underflow plane let's get rid of the fill the cover fill then hit okay so that the staircase can can be seen and then go back to file save as and replace the module go back to the host file and open your hot link manager under external content hot link manager it's we have this update as you can see this at uh, whatever caution marker it's a caution sign it says this has been modified so i can say update then hit ok so my state cases will be updated for the void This will take time because it has to apply it across all the instances automatically. So let's just uh, wait for it to compute. It will take. There we go. We now have our void being placed on our staircases. Okay, you can imagine you have to do this one by one, uh, each manually. It will take you a lot of time. Okay. Uh, let's move on to the next um, chapter let's move on to the next stage which is creating the shading device for our project or for, <coughs> for our structure we can now get rid of this because we are setting with the module is taking care of this the layout so if we say check on 3d and then right click to show all <coughs> let's show all in 3d and then uh, we're going to create now a shading device for the entire building because as it is now it will be difficult for it to be sustainable we need to create some amenities that will help it to to be more sustainable let's see here i think one last thing that we need to do is because we've changed the the level of our flow of our flow slab we need to adjust also our the height of our curtain wall. So I can say select all the curtain wall by activating the curtain wall tool here, and then say Control A. Control A to select all of this, and then uh, let's set the base offset to to zero. I hope it will affect all the according to their uh, to their home story if it doesn't we have to delete all of them and redo the multiplication again i don't think that's that's too much of work it's just small thing to do let's wait um, a bit because it's still updating or computing the process There we go. <clears throat> if we can hit um, escape. All right. Let's see what happened. <coughs> Sorry about that. There's a bit of modification we need to do. I don't know what happened here. This is around 3.3. This is around 3.3. What you need to do is to set our height to be three meters. Select all of these guys and then come here under settings. Instead of having it uh, okay, here is fine. It's, it's three meters because it's 2.7 and 300 that we did previously. What you need to do is to set the height here to make it three meters because that 300 is the one that is affecting our 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 curtain wall. So I would say 3000 and then hit enter. Okay, it should be fine now. So if we check, uh, let's escape. Let's escape. Mm. There is a 
was going on here. Uh, you see that there's a, a little bit of discrepancy for all this. You know what? The best thing is to select all of them and uh, delete. Let's deselect the crown one. Okay, and then get rid of all of this. We need to get it right from the first. From the first uh, from the first slab. Okay. So let's say let's see if what am I supposed to do is here. Make sure this is at zero and then just three meters and it's perfectly aligned with the the floor slab of which there is this difference. I don't know we get this difference. If I measure from floor finish to underside of this is 2.8. If you go there is 3.1 or oh, I see that is the problem. It was supposed to be um, 3 meters. It was supposed to be three meters and then this might be caused by this yeah it's supposed to be three meters so how do we fix that but if you check our story settings everything is three meters i don't know why maybe multiplication of this made that to happen okay i think what we can do as well is to get rid of this mod instances instances of the module like that let's get rid of you know the best way let's make let's just assign that but let me confirm again with this if i measure here from from zero okay okay this is not sitting right on zero it's not sitting right on zero i think that's the problem i think that's the problem this um It's not sitting on zero. That's what makes it being the problem. All right, all right, all right. Now, but I don't think there is any problem because this will sit on top. Let's now duplicate this again. I'll click on it. Multiply it on 27 is the number of flows. Let's pick it from there. We need to make sure it's vertically positioned. All right, and then 8.4, 8,000, 84,000 height. go let's see if that happened okay i think it's it's pretty now perfect all the edges of the slab are being hidden yeah that's what i wanted okay now let's move on to the shading device of this because we need to have a shading device here and then we'll come and have design our rooftop Okay, I'll come and design our roof uh, part with the slab. So uh, to create the shading device, let's go to the home ground, which is a uh, ground floor plan. And then what I need to do is to draw some access lines. So I'll pick line tool and this line, I'll change the line type to dash triple. I'll use this diagonals for the let me just extend that to me. And then move them something like that. Okay, doesn't show right, but it's fine. I can control.
control shift m to mirror this vertical using the center or the midpoint of, of your slide like that so these lines will help us to manu manipulate the elements that we're going to create because we're going to create one side and then uh, mirror it to the other side and that should be helpful right so the first thing to do here is to place some columns that will support our shaving device these columns are going to be made up for a, a steel so I'll activate the column tool and then change the material to a steel and then the size of the column is going to be 400 by 400 millimeters <coughs> sorry about that and then uh, uh, I'll place this column here and then the, to determine the position of this column um, I would, uh, it has to be 2.5 I mean 1.5 from from the from building footprint so let's just draw a polyline and then I'll house this let's just draw a box of a polyline <coughs> sorry about that and then let's select that line right and then click one of the points and offset all edge as 1.5 like we're saying alright and then this will be the position of our column like right here and then we can mirror a copy to the other side Control shift m to mirror a copy use this midpoint of your diagonals to copy it to the other side and then i'm going to copy it horizontally like this around uh, let's say uh, 9.5 meters and then Control shift m to mirror it using the diagonals again mirror it to the other side like so no it's not what i want no let's just undo undo i'm going to make maybe instead of 9.5 to 18 meters oh sorry about that it's supposed to be 30 is not 1.3 Thirteen thousand. right and then mirror Control shift m to mirror a copy to the other side using the center point of this diagonals okay that's basically what i wanted if you check on 3d okay, this is what you have and let's select all these columns so i'm going to activate the column tool here Control a and then i'm going to set them set them to be at the height of the story 27 i'm gonna come here and then select the link story to let's go to select story we want to key into story 28 okay i should go all the way to there now let's say 29 because we have a flow let's say 29 great number one i can control g to group them as well and then uh, again i need to change their attributes so i'll change this where the surface is let's scroll down here and find the surfaces of this and set this uh, override both set it to override both what am I doing and then set it to paint grey let's say paint grey something like this and then the the flow pin and section let's override their pen styles to to this okay for now we can just leave it the way it is and then we use this uh, shading device sorry okay let's activate the graphic override of a simplified like so let's check how this would be look Yeah, that's basically what you have okay <clears throat> now pretty stuff nice stuff so what i need to do um is to go back to the plan view <coughs> sorry about that case i don't know what's what happened to me yesterday okay so once we have this we'll go back to our ground floor and then we're gonna use a curtain wall tool again for this and this time around is going to be very interesting because we're gonna exploit to the maximum level 
you, you will see what I mean. So what I need to do here is to activate the curtain wall tool and then let's just quickly draw it uh, from this corner. Okay, I'll draw it from this corner to that corner. Am I right? Perfect. Make sure, yeah, it's right on the edge. Nice stuff. So if we check on 3D, this thing will be, or this curtain wall will be located right from the outside. Okay. So what we need to do is to set a separate schemes or a kitten or scheme style for this because it's a shading device we're gonna just create more like a breeze block i guess uh, i hope you get what i'm saying to say so i'll select this and then open its settings what i need to do here under the scheme uh, settings let's click on the favorites we're going to reuse the checkerboard let's activate the checkerboard and then let's just drag it from here and want to I'm going to have three three rows let's add another row there so that we can have this and then uh, we're going to get rid of this transom the bridge block is going to be like a, more like a brick uh, a brick pattern a running a bonding a running bond kind of so if I delete this I have a full brick and then this will be half half and then uh, um, at the top here it's going to be it's going to be the top one weapon because I know it has to be a mirror of that so let's select all the panels because it's a blizzard block we don't want to have this as closed it's going to be deleted panels it's just going to be an empty stuff like that and we're going to increase the frame width to be 400 let's go to frames and then the trans on width or trans on frame let's make it 400 make it fun and then on the preview this is how it, it is okay and then let's go back to the scheme I'm not sure is this okay this has to go and uh, I know there's supposed to be some okay let's apply it first and then we'll We'll see what will happen after and then uh, let's go to the ground plan view and what i need to do is to select this now um 2d material this is now is going to come into play so i will control x all right and then let's select this elevation i'll move it a little bit out from the away from the project and then select this point stretch it to accommodate the entire width or length of the building so i'll right click on it and then open with current view settings i'm gonna open with current view settings and uh, we're going to paste that uh, 2d sketch there this is the pattern of what we want to create in terms of our shading block for for this or shading breeze block for for this project you don't need advanced techniques to, to create great projects, office projects in Architect. But so far, I didn't use any additional um, uh, uh, tools. And then let's change the override to a simplified plan. Everything that I've used at, at this point is just coming from the default Architect template. I'm just manipulating the settings and achieve great results. So that's basically the power of Archicad. So once it's updated our elevation, let's right click and paste the sketch here. Right click and paste the sketch there. And let's see what will happen. I'll just paste on the center of the screen and this is going to be on zero i'm going to align it here and then this sketch it has to sit right on top of this elevation click outside to apply the the, the paste so what you see there okay let me change the color all these sketches or these lines they represent the pattern for our breeze block all right so we need to have this height of a breeze block 
up to this level so i'm going to select or pick one of the points here and then use the element stretch height then i'm going to stretch it all the way to there and wait for it to update there we go and then uh, we can now see how our breeze block is performing we have this i think we have a problem here because uh, we need to have we cannot have the mirror of our staking i don't know what you get to me if you are doing a, uh, whatever running or brick bonds i don't think you can have a straight bonds like this so let's come here under settings and then we're gonna get rid of this um transom and this one let's hit ok and see what will happen it looks great now we only left with one which is this area here the rest is fine let's go back again let's go back to the settings and uh, we need to have uh, I think I need to introduce the third I mean the fourth uh, panel so I would introduce this panel the full brick on top here so that it can be a mirror of that so I'll come here and then add in order for you to add this one make sure you select it and then you add so you would add now two of this I can use this arrows and move it down to that so now we have one and then two and then it makes sense now this is the logic of breaking up your wall so if I hit ok it will be now perfect so let's just wait for it to see how it will be fine all right now you can see this the entire clean um uh, breeze block so we can appreciate this on 3d before we start running around with the settings that's basically our breeze block what i'm not sure is the size of it let's increase the size of it maybe instead of one meter let's uh, Okay, here's the length. Still one meter, maybe 1.5. 1.5. Yes, and then, yeah. We can go back to the frames, maybe. Let's see the frame. That is 1.5 is fine. We hit OK. We might also increase the height. What do you think? You might increase the height but anyway for this demonstration it's it's perfectly fine what left is to change the materials i want to have it a darker color so come here under frames and uh, go down here under curtain or frame settings override the surface let's find paint dark dark gray and hit okay there we go we now have this type of uh um, format all right so now let's go back to our elevation and apply that pattern into our our curtain wall to achieve that uh, let's say we are selecting the curtain wall and then i'm going to instead of going to the it's settings dialog this time around i'm going to go to edit we're hitting edit mode of our kit curtain wall and then within the parameters of uh, the components of the edit mode of our kitten mode we want to activate the scheme grid okay once we activate the scheme grid you would see now these grid lines and then we are interested on the boundary which is this thick line you see on the footprint of on the boundary of our of our our kitten mode. so i'm gonna select that line and then we have these points and pick one of these points okay now this side is fine this side it looks fine isn't it we need to start from this side and then i'll put this point here and then uh, there we go takes a bit of time i don't know why and then add another point on this edge like that by using this insert a new node and then i'm going to move it here just to define the geometry of our sketch we are transferring our sketch into our this curtain and then i'll add another 
point to this edge that will go all the way to this line and uh, we move on to this edge and bring it back to here right and uh, we'll define it let's just complete it and this one has to be all the way to there and what left yeah this has to go all the way to to this point and then we have uh, this I don't know with that this this is supposed to be a straight line like that we we'll make it straight just to reference from there if we hit exit I don't know why it's going all the way to there it was supposed to end it here let's just confirm first on the 3d here yeah, it has to end here not going all the way so let's go back to our elevation and uh, we will take this edge okay sorry maybe do it on uh, no i don't think doing it what am i want to do here let's just do it on the ground floor let's see it here and reduce it i don't know why it went all the way through there it has to be right on this column i hope it doesn't change the pattern good nice stuff great i'm impressed okay <laughs> It looks great it looks very fantastic it looks great guys okay so we can maybe increase the size of our our boundary you see our boundary is slim but for now for the sake of this is fine oh we need to make this edge to go all the way to this corner because that's where it gets its support i don't know why it decided to change the length let's move it to there okay so now i can control shift m to mirror it along these diagonals to the other side and then uh, this will happen because it it affects or oh, it's across maybe multiple flows so if we hit continue it should be fine so if we check on 3d we have uh, this kind of uh, form Okay, so for here, we would want a close connection between these elements instead of having a, this lines. We can edit it. We can say edit it and then remove that. We can remove only this. And to select all of them, you would use this um, what whatever menu, I don't know what you call it. If you click on the vertical one, it will select all the one vertical, and then you can delete something like this. And then you hit exit. Do the same to this one, or you can just go back and mirror again the copy. Let's select that. Make sure it's all the way, and then delete. Hit exit. Let's see the results. Okay. We want them to be this way we can make sure they sit right across we can make sure the connection is 90 degrees guys and uh, i don't know it's not showing this but let's just select it and we see the nearest maybe going to the fourth floor we would see holistically yes that was it and let's right click on ground floor to show as a trace reference i just want this line the diagonals and then i can select this maybe <clears throat> because um that is being created this gap is being created by the offset from the by the offset of this curtain wall from from the reference line as you can see we can we can fix that by selecting this and then come here under the the depth is it depth of this or we can flip this to the inside no 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 i don't think that one is 
it's an option there is an offset I know for this mm, instead of 300 let's make it two. okay let me measure first what's this it's 150 okay so in order for me to achieve that I will go to the ground and select this line let's make a copy by using offset all edges and then <coughs> click on control to add a copy and then add 150 so that when you go back to the fourth story we can use this as a guide so i'm going to select that and then move it to there something like that and do the same to uh, this Am I doing the right thing? Let's check in the 3D. Oh, it, it added again that element. Oh no. I didn't want it to be like that. If you are happy with this vertical numbers, you can leave them, but I'm, I'm not, not happy, to be honest. I'm not happy. Okay, let, let me just do the editing for the last time. Let's hit on edit. Select all these gentlemen by using this menu. Then delete. Hit exit mode. Do the same to this one. Hit edit. Select that. Select the board with the on the menu vertically and delete. And then exit the mode. Still we are still getting that um, guys let me know in the comment section if you have an idea how to fix this what i want is to achieve a perfect corner or joint for these two elements but at the moment i think i'm failing and i might just leave it from the original let's just undo and leave it from the original yes i guess Yes. All right. Now let's leave it here for the sake of this demonstration. All right. And then uh, the next thing is to before we multiply this to across because it's easy for us to multiply this and wrap around um, the building. We need to create some details. If you look at here, uh, here we're going to have a planter and then have our trees on top there that will run across all the entire height of our building so we need to cater that uh, for our for our, our shading device we want to make this building sustainable as much as we, as much as we can gentlemen and let's say we're gonna use a beam tool to achieve that let's hit escape and then activate the beam tool <clears throat> the beam tool is one of the um, intricate or intuitive tool that Arcad has, but I think it's also unutilized, gentlemen, in, in manner what it can achieve out of its context, rather than, rather than just being a beam tool to create beams of your project. You can create a lot of things with it. So I'll use this um, geometry method of change, and then let's set the material to a steel, and then steel structural. I can override the surfaces as well. Let's come down here to over the surfaces. Let's override all this to let's find uh, metal, right? Or maybe let's just paint. Go for paint, um, dark gray. Make sure they are all linked to change all the sides once. And then this is going to be around. Uh, let me just for now because what we want to do is to create a planter is to create a planter and then on the other side it has to be a strip of LED light that from this view you would see creating the geometry across the building so that will create a nice effect for our building so to achieve that and our width of the building I mean of the beam I'm going to make it uh, this distance right i'm going to make it equal to this distance so let's say it's going to be i'm going to make it the width is going to be 
um, 2 meters 50 and then the height let's make it uh, 1 meter 1000 millimeters right and then I'm going to open its settings here or oh, I can just do it on the hand the on the info box the reference axis it has to be on the outside I'll use this top corner and then I can place so to place it I'm going to start placing it from here but it's better to do it once I'm going to start from this angle going all the way to the it makes sense right so let's do it I'll start from this area here and then I'll maintain that edge I'll go along this edge just like that and then go down here with a slope and come here and click on this corner and then while it's still, still in the process you can hit O to activate the orbit and then you can orbit while it's still in the process without going out or without cancelling your process and then to go back so that you can continue you need to escape just once to cancel the orbit command and then you can continue with the rest of your your beam placement like that it's a nice trick when dealing with this kind of um, activities in IK. so I'll complete it to this and right click and hit OK that's how it is um, we've managed to place it as you can see it goes all the way and then uh, yes I know it's not perfect because it's encroaching all to our slab which is fine so we need to create a profile now for this let's uh, cancel this by clicking on the arrow tool and select one of the, the elements make sure the suspend group is active so that you can select one all right once we are done with this let's go to the options and then we're going to capture a profile of that let's go to complex profile and then capture a profile so it will give us this uh, uh, field to work around to create our our planter together with the LED lighting okay so what I'm going to do here is to divide this I'm going to have uh, let's just find a line to waste line Here's the line two. I'm going to draw a guideline of. Uh, I could have used a guideline instead of a line two. 900 from this side. That 900, I'm going to add a point to this field. Let's add a point that will reference this 900, right? Okay, and then I can now pick this edge to create a plant order. I need to create an offset edge here as well. Let me say create. Uh, it's supposed to be 150. I'll add a 150 point here, and then the remaining part I'll select it and then say offset or edge going down like that. Okay, and then uh, I need to get rid of this material here. I can take this 150 as well to maintain it. I'll cross all this, and then I can now come select this man and use subtract with polygon. I can delete that all right so this height is supposed to be 9 and um 400 so let's draw a guideline of 400 like like this and then i'll uh, offset this edge to using this offset edge to here which is going to be 900 and then within this i'm going to create a light because this will be the edge of our of our this will be the view for lighting our facade of our shading device so i'm going to create a fill let's pick parameters of this fill or just activate the fill tool and then come here under materials assign it maybe something to represent light what if we have let's just go for glass for the time being because i know a kid doesn't have that material oh sorry about that and i want to do it on the new on the new uh, field so assign it glass and then come here I'll make it uh, make it 125 by 250 okay so I'm going to use this line to trim off but make sure first it's positioned on the midpoint so I'll pick that midpoint to oh, no, this midpoint to there yeah, something like that and then I'll select the main uh, field 
pick one of the hotspot to activate the subtract with polygon and then activate the magic one by press and hold the spacebar key and then click on that one so we have now this we can we can recess it a bit by clicking this edge and then move it back maybe by 35 something like this okay and then uh, let's fill this area with with some soil because when i have plants here i'm going to activate the fill and find uh, material for let's say earth we don't have earth here or soil yeah there we go we have soil here and then let's fill in this area up to this level that will be our our fill and then we have to save this profile and i'm going to call it just a plant right hit enter and then let's go back to our 3d and apply that to our to our beam uh, element wait, wait i don't know why i decided to to do that okay let's select all our beams i'll select all of our beams and then uh, <coughs> Make sure suspend group is active just to select them all and then make sure again it's unactive because to apply this you have to activate you cannot you cannot apply this on grouped elements you have to then ungroup them first so that you can apply so let's just hit on apply there we go oh we, we didn't fix the encroaching part of that so um this i will uh I will uh, go back to because it needs to be fixed on the reference point right so i would see let me just come here on the floor plane and then uh, let's find the fourth floor right open the fourth floor i don't want to do this you can just uh, collapse that let's where can we find our our beams so you can see and then find it from here the home story is story 9. Let's go to the story 9 and fix that. It's a pretty simple stuff. So um, we would measure from here this distance to there. It's around 5, 560. So we need to go back to our profile. I'll just come here under planter. Select everything. Move it back by 150. And then hit save to apply the changes that will automatically apply that to our to our our beam our profile wow. it's not yet uh... okay there's a i didn't move it much let's go back didn't move because you could see here the black thing is the this black solid line or solid uh, is the is the beam but i need to move it from here to there by oh it was supposed to be 1.5 now it's 400 so let's go back to our profile select all of this move it this direction by 400 it should be fine now come here under the profile manager and then save it should be fine now. Um, let's wait for it. Yes, there we go. Now it's been updated. You see now our planter wraps around nicely around our glass material. Right? Let's just confirm by coming here and then let's see. Yes, I'm pretty happy. Yes, now I'm pretty happy with the results so far. Okay, I can now close the profile. I cannot close the profile because we just need one profile, then we will repeat it across all the elements. So we have this material that are, uh, are glittering or are clashing. This is not a big problem because we can solve it uh, with. Uh, solid element operation so let's just select this two um curtain walls and right click 
to connect and bring um, solid element operation. By default, it will be added as a target. Let's select our our profiles or our planter. Make sure everything has been selected and then edit as an operator. Change the operation to subtraction with upward extrusion because we want to trim the upper of our army. And then we can hit execute. So it will clean up that. Let's close this. Now we have a nice perfect uh, um, what you call plant. But it doesn't reflect, it doesn't um, represent the materials we we assigned on the profile. Remember we put a soil here for our plants and then this side is to adjust that or to fix that. I think let's uh, activate the suspend group and select one of this right click or instead of right click I think it's around the surfaces instead of overriding the surfaces this time around we are going to an override so that you can see right oh I have to do all of them let me suspend groups and then uh, do this do that let's an override an override let's see okay there we go let's see it's perfect it's nice as you can see then we have LED running through this glass at night it will glow and define this geometry across okay that looks great I can have my plants there Right now, we need also to fix uh, the bottom of our members. As you can see, we could utilize uh, this, but this will be good for fixing. We need to have to have a frame again underneath here. This is gonna just use a normal beam instead of using a curtain. I mean, a profile. So let's just use a normal beam of the dimensions of. Uh, let's just go for 400 by 400. Beam and let's see where we are going to place this. We need to decide the origin of your reference line where you want to use to place. So if you if you had to use this, if you had to use the outside, we're gonna use the outside edge, right? So let's go for it. I'm gonna pick this edge. Make sure you are always on this um, geometry method, the chain one, because you can only get the or define it with the slopes. Okay, then I'll pick uh, this edge, move down to this corner, go to, wow, here we don't have that edge. Okay, we can, we can click on this one, right click and then hit OK. It's fine. And then uh, let's see how it is. Yeah, it looks great. It looks great. It looks great and then you can find the level of this which is around two. home stories are the third story let's open it and I'm going to select that which is this one no, that's the I think it's this one where is it okay maybe go to the fourth floor Let's see it. Let me, yeah, we need to hide or unactivate the trace reference. Where is it? You, I'm not seeing it. That becomes the problem because we cannot mirror without seeing it. Let's just pick one. If we can, let's select this. This is around the three store, and it doesn't show. I don't know why it doesn't show. I can set it to be all relevant stories, or let me just say home story, home story only, right? So that when I come here on the third story, I see it, which is this. Perfect. Now let's make sure the suspend group is active to select all of it and then control shift m to make a, co a mirror but make sure you activate the trace because we want to trace the ground for 
we've placed these diagonals that's the one that we're using for mirroring our copies to the other side so if we check on 3d this will be applied on the other side but we have an issue here to fix because let's unsuspend our group and then select these two and then intersect them to clean up this detail yes this one will get away with it but uh, for now yeah we'll get away with it uh, just let me get away with it gents for now i know it's not a, an ideal situation but i'll fix it um, in the next videos okay so that's basically what you have here um, that we can also have lights on this profile again we can create lights again let's select this and or we do what we go to options and then complex profile and capture the profile so we going to add lights here let's find the fill tool here and then change it to glass material change to glass material and then uh, it's going to draw our profile here it's going to be 100 by 260 let's make 250 to equal make sure it's positioned to the midpoint and then i'll use it to stretch i mean to create an opening or a hole by using subtract polygon and then activate the magic wand then select the element you are using to cut a hole with okay and then i like to have a recess let's just offset this edge to have a recess on it something like that and then i'll hit save this will be the, the shade i'll say shade and then enter and then uh, let's go back to our 3d and apply this profile there i'm gonna select all of this and then apply the profile select that make sure the suspend group is unactive to select all of your thing and then you activate it again because you cannot apply to a grouped elements so you have to so i'm just using it to select all of it and then go back to uh, activate the suspend group so that i can apply just like that wait for it to perform the, the application of the profile there we go now we have uh, this so if you have to go and render this project i know there's a, a separate material that i can apply emissive material for this or well, i can create an emissive material and to use it uh for for this let's do that i actually let's do that i'll go to options elements let's find uh, uh, surfaces okay we better first create a surface that will represent our emissive so i think like, we'll find it under glass okay here it is lamp this is lamp right we can use this lamp glass lamp let's find the emission uh, blah, blah, blah. yes ambience yeah this we can control this all right let's hit okay and then we go back again to options element that was this time around we're opening building materials remember the material that we used for for that is glass we we have to create a separate material for a building material for for this lighting let's open our building materials okay and then let's select this glass hit on new i want to duplicate it and then call it light hit enter and then assign it the surface we've been we created which is the glass lamp there we go and then hit ok we go back to our profile and then redefine the light field to take the material of uh, light so let's come here and then uh, change this to material we created just now called light and then hit save to apply the changes so if you go back to the 3d would have now emissive um, um what you call emissive strip of light it's not going to be uh visible here because of uh let's select this it's not going to be visible because we override the surfaces so let's select all these beams and then come here under surfaces 
uh, instead of overriding them i'm going to an override okay so now we have this strip okay of light and we can also apply it to this uh, profile so let's and suspend group i mean let's activate suspend group right click on this one and uh, let's say edit selected composite let's change the material of the bulb to the newly created uh, light okay, and then activate then hit save to update your model perfect that will be now perfect all right great stuff so now is the time for the fun part uh, we have to now wrap around our building and make sure we complete the this part so let's start with the with the what you call um the beams i'll go to ground let's go to ground uh floor i mean the column sorry and uh, select one of the column and suspend the groups Control shift m use these diagonals to make a copy to the other side i could now sh Control shift m again use these diagonals or i can select together with this one and then Control shift m to make a copy using these diagonals across to the other side because um i was i know there's a duplicate on this one there are two columns sitting on this one so what i would do i'll select i'll activate this as a suspend groups and then select this one delete one of it come here do the same delete one of it same applies to this one delete one of it i'm not sure about this we might have yes perfect now i'm pretty sure we are sitting in, in a good number of polygons okay so if we check on 3d we have now this the support of our shading all around okay so now is the time to do the uh, duplicating of the shading so i'll go back to the let's find the story that we, the home story for this which is uh i think the fourth um let's go for the fourth floor and uh let's select that select this and control shift m use these diagonals and apply right so if i check on 3d it has to wrap around the building something like this we need to now bring in the beams for the planter and for the bottom part so this one let's start with the bottom part the bottom part we can only see this from the first floor right we did first floor isn't it or oh, it was on the cloud okay here it is and then there it is we'll make sure it's the suspend group is active to select all the group and then control shift m we use this diagonals to move it to the side because it's covering across many or multiple stories it will give you this information but just hit continue you know what you're doing okay and then we move on to we want which one do we did we do we place let's mirror i mean rotate or we've placed the bottom one the bottom frame so we need to do the top which is around ninth floor the planter this one control shift m mirror it diagonally like that hit continue perfect so that's basically what we have for this part okay that's basically what you have for that i'm pretty happy if you can zoom in here it's a nice detail it's a nice detail gentlemen right so in the next chapter or in the next stage we'll be completing the remaining part we have one this and then that will be done okay um we are at the stage where we need to speed up the process because we already now um have all the basic <coughs> um information on how you can do we have now the know-how to place this we can now speed up the whole process for the remaining shading devices 
So let's go back to our elevation. And then uh, I'm going to reuse these ones that I already placed here. So I'm going to select uh, this. Sorry, it's fine. Yeah, this shady device. Make sure you pick it from the location line, which is this blue line, the reference location line. And then I'm going to move it right to this uh, flow. Just that. And, and then uh, let's redefine its uh, geometry according to our sketch. So I'll, I'll hit on edit. There's edit for for edit mode, and then activate the skin grid like we did for the previous one. And uh, we need to select this. Yes, this point. Move it to here. Okay. And move this side. The side is going to be somewhere there, somewhere there, and then here it's going to be straight. I don't know if it's a straight line or something like that. Right. And then we go at the top there. I'll move this at the top here somewhere here to align with my sketch. Take this point to there. And do the same to here. But here we have just one. I'll drag this all the way to there. And then uh, I'm going to eliminate this point again by just moving it to this corner. Okay, it's not accurate, but that's what I wanted. And uh, yeah, it's almost complete. I can hit exit in the edit mode. Let's select again this Control Shift M. I'll move it to this level. From this level again, we're gonna do the the geometry redefining from the sketch. And the last one is pretty simple because we're just dealing with the, the base. Let's just uh, edit Skin Grid, make sure it's active. And then at the top, it's pretty straightforward. It's going to be just a straight from the top there. And then this side as well. Oh, we have a point here. But it's not fine. Make sure you reference with that so that it can be straight. And then we get rid of this point by just picking it and docking it to the other point. Alright, we are done with the top part. Let's move on to the second part. The, the, I mean the bottom part. This one we just uh, move this point to there. I don't know this line. Okay, let's just move it all the way to here to align it with the sketch. And then we take this one also to there. And uh, let's move here. Put this in this corner. And then I can drop this a bit down to align it with the sketch. Just drop it uh, somewhere here somewhere there and then hit execute I mean uh, exit the edit mode that's basically what we have so if we to check on 3d that should be up as you can see it looks impressive I'm in love with this building oh <clears throat> it's, it's good all right so now I need to do a a mirror process a fun stuff okay i'll select this and see which level is it is it uh, linked with so let me see is salon 10 story i'll go to the 10 story on the 10 story we know we have this Control shift m use these diamonds to mirror it that way and then select both of them Control shift m 
use uh, their cross diagonals to move it to the other side and then uh, I'll move to the upper stories because that's the last um, that's where the last shade is being positioned so I'll just open it from here and then select that Control shift M use the diagonals to mirror copy that side and then select all of them and Control shift M move to the next uh, cross or the opposite diagonals and then move copy to the other side and that should be it in terms of that we are remaining with the the planter and the bottom part of our the bottom frame of our shading so that's how it is let's just complete without uh, wasting any time okay we still have these issues to solve um, for example i think we can just uh, do it here activate the suspend group select these two and then you can intersect them just to clean up this corner i think same applies to the bottom corner we may have the same issue here I intersect let's find the other corners i think this should repeat on the majority of the corners same applies to this one we didn't perform the solid element operation to these ones as well so it's another thing to to check but i don't mind doing it at a later stage that one so let me finish off with uh, placement of this okay let me finish off the placement of that so i would uh, pick let me start with a planter yeah start with the planter pick, pick the parameters of that to activate uh, pick the parameter to activate this the beam make sure you are on the chained me geometry method like i said that will help you and then come here i will pick it from the inside from the inside which is this corner and then run around to there uh, hit O to um, orbit while you are still in the process and then hit escape just once you don't hit multiple times because it will cancel your your beam command and then I'll pick this corner and then go to the next one do I need to go all the way or I can just run copy but you can also run all the way like that but this will take your time so I would right click let's right click and then hit ok so that I can now check what level is this it says it's in the level of 19 now come here on the 19 level select that make sure there's a spin group is it's an active and then control shift M use diagonals mirror to that side pick both of them control shift M mirror to the other diagonals okay simple stuff you can also perform the trimming of trimming up the edges like this corner here unsuspend group make sure it's active and then i'll select these two corners i mean these two item and then fill it let's check on 3d i think it's better we do it on 3d um, that. now it's been placed across like that all right we are let's move on to the the bottom part at least the top the top part shading device doesn't have a plant so i'm going to scroll down here and then pick parameters of this and uh, i'm gonna start from this one remember this we have to take the outside edge which is this this edge then uh, move it with that make sure it's your accurate yes move on oh no that's the problem guys i said you should always use a change method so i didn't use a change method let's just delete 
if it doesn't show you the chain method is because you've picked parameters of a sloped um, beam that's why it doesn't so you have to come here under the settings and then change it to being a uh, horizontal right and then hit ok you can now activate the chain command and then uh, you can uh, do your great stuff like so and then pick it from make sure you're accurate at i'll just zoom so that i can find yeah let's go all the way to the yes then we finish it off let me rotate and oh i'll orbit again to find this corner i don't know why it's giving me lot of troubles right click on that right click hit ok oh wow it went on the wrong side so what i need to do here can i flip it i should have drawn it going up with this okay let me just delete let me just delete it because I have to draw it from, let me draw it from, uh, activate the geometry method, draw it from this point, going all the way like here, this is the right direction, and uh, move to that corner, escape, to cancel your orbit, and then finish it off to this corner, right click, hit OK. Right, so we can also do it just for the last one. Mm, pick it from here, pick it there, and pick that one. Right click and okay, impressive. So I need to transfer this to the other uh, sides. So to do that, um let's start with uh, this one let's identify its uh, level of story we can find it around story 10 let's find story 10 here on the story 10 is the that's the one make sure the suspend group is just like that and then you can control shift m Right that way, continue. Oh, sorry, sorry about that. Let's add, uh, add this copy, Control Shift M, so that we can mirror it through. Wow, make sure you accurate, make sure you select the line. Yes, that way, hit continue, and then check on the 3D and. Uh, much everything so let's move on to the next let's we're gonna select this and see which level is it 17 i want to open the 17 floor and then select there it is control shift m is it the one what is this one okay now that's the one You have to be sure with with your selection so i'll control shift m i'm pretty sure with this one and then i'll move to the other side and uh, another copy control shift m let's drag it or multiply it or um, right sorry to the other side i think that's completes our our placement of this so we'll be left with some small details of cleaning the edges of all these uh, uh, combination so I can go ahead and do that with you or you can do it alone at your own uh, at your own time so I have would have some discrepancies like this corner you see we have this so it's because it cost by uh, that you see these are things that you can sit down and just spend your time and clean up uh, the edges but 
the other ones they are perfect like this edge you see now it's it's cleanly done right and this one it will need you to activate the suspend group and select the two um, and intersect just just to fix it like that right and i don't know why it's not sitting on the edge so i could select them separately and then move it at the top here yeah these are modeling um errors that comes in natural so you need to be sure with what you're doing and then you see we have also this issue here you can clean up by editing the curtain wall and select this delete and uh, yeah we have this one as well you can delete so that will be the uh, amount of work that is being left yeah just to knit together everything you're building it has to look complete it has to look really complete so you have to go through all these small 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 details and finalize your project you see here we still have that i don't know why but because sometimes it happens okay now you cannot do it for both um so you have to select one for whatever reason it, it happens gentlemen so you are bound to make such kind of mistakes and you have to be you have to have the desire and the will to to solve and make sure your building is it represents what you intended before so for me i won't i won't be discouraged by this i would take the um the challenge and finalize obviously I've, the amount of time that i spend constructing this building so it's not it's worth it for me to go item by item to check where the errors are so same applies to this one i think here the error is because if, when we deleted that this remained am i right let's see challenge let me just get away with it um yeah that's fine i think i'm pretty happy with the result and then you can place now your planters your, your plants here so let's do that i'll go to objects uh and search for plants there we go here we have plants evergreen no, i think this one is the shrubs yeah in my region shrubs are the perfect ones for this kind of um, stuff click it there wow it looks smooth let me go for hazel mm. hit ok place it there nice stuff i'll just go and place like that So you have a building with some places it depends on the software you're going to use for rendering this i normally use lumion for my renderings and uh, i know if i were to take this to lumion i can do great stuff right so let's complete this by uh, fixing our roof so i'm gonna go to the last floor and uh, from here i'll pick i'll activate the slab tool and then make sure the geometry method is that one and then instead of overriding the top surface like we did for the floors we are going to un override it and then let's draw our floor slab right at the edge of the columns to the other side like that if you check on 3d we should have a skylight i think it needs to be up a bit it needs to be up a bit Maybe let's raise it around 250. Yes. The amount of this too much. Okay. Issues like this, you need to fix that. You need to fix it, gentlemen. Uh, that wasn't part of the idea. 
to have these members there. I would just get rid of them and this side as well. Select this and use this vertical selection menu and then delete. Exit the edit mode. Simple stuff. Okay. So let's go back to the ground floor. I would start up and use it from the footing. Let's just do it from the footing and then I'll just draw a slab. Use the footprint of that. Obviously, the foundation of this is going to be something uh, that uh, let's just do it here. And then if we check on 3D, that's what we have. And we can have the height of our footing. Let's just make it. I'll make it uh, 2.5 just for sake of this demonstration something like that okay um we came to the end of this video guys um i think you've learned uh, we've covered a lot of stuff uh, in short period of time and this is what exactly you need in order for you to complete an office building so i think this needs to go all the way to the whole story like that Yeah, and I can increase uh, the width. Yes, like I was saying, this is pretty much everything that you have to know in order for you to create an office building. And, uh, you can explore this um, strategy and then create some fantastic building you can think of. If I had to sit down or if someone have to pay me and design this project, I would design each face differently. It would have each face would have a unique profiles of this. I will have different geometry to make it flu fluent so that when you uh, when you're the side, it continues all the way to to the corner there. So it's it just a bend around like that it goes all the way to the, to the bottom of, your, of the building. But other than that, I'm pretty happy with so far the outcomes of this uh, video. I hope you enjoyed it and if you enjoyed it make sure you subscribe to our youtube channel and then share this course with anyone you think you benefit from and i will see you in the next video thanks for making it to so far congratulations you've made it to the first office building in architect thank you once again i'll see you in the next video bye bye